Henrietta Wood. No image exists and seemingly no trace of her in the history books. As a slave, she wins her freedom 13 years before the Civil War even starts. The picture of her that comes through in the sources about her life just paints the picture of an incredibly determined and resilient person. But she still has a fight in front of her and it'll impact her descendants for generations. It's not just a fight for freedom, but a fight for justice. Henrietta Wood is born a slave in Kentucky. A woman moves north to Ohio and takes Henrietta with her. As it's a free state, the woman legally has to free her. Henrietta describes that period as a sweet taste of liberty. But not everyone is happy. The woman's daughter and son-in-law see Henrietta as valuable property they've lost, and they vow to get their inheritance Henrietta back to Kentucky. Well, I think the story really spotlights that the border between slavery and freedom was very fluid in this period. She seized a window of opportunity. Caleb McDaniel is a history professor at Rice University. He says the daughter and son-in-law conspire with a sheriff's deputy named Zebulon Ward. Zebulon Ward was looking for a way to make an easy dollar. He was somebody who understood that in the United States at that time, to own an enslaved person was one of the most valuable kinds of, of capital that a white person could own uh, in the South. Henrietta is working at a boarding house and her employer brings her on a carriage ride. They cross the Ohio River into Kentucky where Zeb Ward and his men capture her. Because it was easy to bring someone across the river into this different legal regime, Ward knew that the law would be on his side in Kentucky. People of color were presumed to be slaves in Kentucky unless they could prove that they were free. And that's the problem. The legal documentation of her freedom had been destroyed in a courthouse fire, and her personal copy, Zeb Ward, destroys it. A sympathetic innkeeper helps her fight in court, but without legal papers, the judge rules Henrietta is not free. Ward takes her back to Kentucky, and she ends up on a plantation in Mississippi where the cotton industry is booming. I sow the cotton, hold the cotton, and pick the cotton. I worked under the meanest overseers and got flogged and flogged until I thought I should die. After the war, she travels up the Mississippi River back to Cincinnati, where a lawyer helps her file a lawsuit against her kidnapper, Zeb Ward. This was a lawsuit about slavery itself and about what formerly enslaved people were owed in restitution for what they had endured. It takes years to resolve. In the end, she wins. A lot of the commentary seemed to be uh, along the lines of, um, well, isn't it, isn't it nice that stories like this won't happen again? Or slavery is something that, you know, is in the past. Um, and so it, there, was a, there was a sense that this was a kind of a closing chapter to a history that uh, the nation didn't didn't want to continually revisit. Closing because they were anxious to close it. Exactly. Or at least exactly. not talk about it. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Henrietta wins the case, but the judgment is only a fraction of what she asks. The jury awards her $2,500. We know that in the immediate aftermath of the Civil War, formerly enslaved people continued to argue that restitution should be a part of the nation's settlement of slavery. But it was also, from the beginning, an unpopular position among white Americans, sort of pointed to the Civil War and the costs of, of uh, fighting to abolish slavery as satisfying whatever debt they owed. Uh, people like Wood, you know, made the argument that that wasn't sufficient. While $2,500 is just a fraction of what she asked for in today's money, it's worth about $65,000. But would Zeb Ward actually pay? McDaniel's investigation takes him to Chicago to find the answer. Did Henrietta ever get the money? 
The National Archives at 73rd and Pulaski houses court documents, and here is what he tracks down. 1871, mm -hmm. and we can see here Zeb Ward's name right, and so, Henrietta Wood. So this is one of the entries that shows the date, November 4th, 1871, when one of the, the pleadings in her suit was filed. Her but what about evidence of payment? Her case file is missing. The archivists search again and again. After multiple searches, they find it. It actually says that Ward had paid the money and uh, fully satisfied the $2,500 that she had, had won. And of course, the file also had this verdict slip that the jury wrote uh, its verdict on. And then it was bursting with other details about, about her story from her declaration, from the replies that she made to Ward's lawyers. And so this became sort of the Rosetta Stone that, that pointed me to other sources at other archives to help to reconstruct the story. So here's one of the places where Henrietta Wood made her legal mark to attest to the testimony she had given. She wasn't able to, to sign her name, but she was able to make her, her legal mark, her X there. Kind of, I always get chills, like, you know, she touched this paper. Henrietta gets the $2,500. She and her son, Arthur, moved to Chicago. He uses some of the money to purchase a home in Hyde Park. As the World's Fair comes to Chicago, real estate prices rise dramatically. Arthur uses his profits to attend Union Law School, and he becomes one of the first African-American graduates of what is now Northwestern Law School. The house no longer stands, but later in life, he did live here at 57th and South Wabash. Henrietta Wood's descendants become a doctor, engineer, a fighter pilot with the Tuskegee Airmen, a prominent jazz musician with Count Basie, I think it did set that whole family onto a path into the middle class uh, that many other African Americans on the South Side uh, were not able to secure because of redlining and housing discrimination in the 20th century. So this is a story in some ways about you know what might have been or a parallel path um, had formerly enslaved people received some restitution uh, or reparations in, in the aftermath of slavery. Uh, what would that wealth have meant uh, to families like Henrietta Woods? No gravestone, no monument, no photo. Her mark on the historical record, nothing more than an X she marked more than a century ago. But in these legal papers, Kayla McDaniel resurrects her story. A simple X begins a legacy that transcends slavery by providing opportunity many others never had. Her fight for justice changes the course of her descendants' lives for generations. Men and women who make their mark in ways Henrietta Wood never could.